Hi, I'm Julian Clayton. I am from New York City. My name is Julia Dieringer. I work as an urban researcher for the German Institute of Urban Affairs. My name is Yunaida Hackmark and I am a PhD candidate at the Hurti School in Berlin. My name is Ian Lundy. I am from California originally. I live and work in New York. Uh, my background is in real estate development, public-private partnerships. My name's Grace. Um, I am from Los Angeles originally. That's where I grew up. Um, I had been working in Austin, Texas. I was working for an art center um, through the Parks and Recreation Department. Yeah, my name is Alexander Shee. I'm a researcher um, do, conducting research at the interface of urban planning and mobility planning. Uh, I'm Richard Lawrence, Jr. I am a principal planner with the city of Alexandria, Virginia. My name is Jamal Glenn. Uh, I am a venture capital investor. I work for a large impact investment firm. My name is Mark. I'm with the German Consulate General in San Francisco, where I cover economic affairs. New Urban Progress is a project on the future of cities and the future of the transatlantic partnership. For us, we had a two-year program where we took city leaders from Germany and the United States we brought them together first digitally, and then we actually did two trips, one in Germany, one in the United States. Where we saw six different cities, not just for fun, but to exchange the best practices on how cities can be more sustainable, how cities can be more innovative, and how cities can be more democratic. We needed to do this at this time because we saw that there was a weakening in the transatlantic relationship. And for us, it was crucial that we strengthen this long-standing bond between our leaders and citizens and everyone who takes part in a city. And our main goal really was to show that together at the city level, where most people are living, where the ideas are happening, where really progress is empirical and can really be felt by its citizens, that when these ideas are exchanged and replicated and actually then implemented across the cities in these two countries, Germany, United States, that we will see progress. Inclusive growth and innovation is incredibly important for the transatlantic relationship because some of the most innovative and fastest growing cities are in the United States and Europe. And those cities don't always grow in a way where everyone gets to benefit from the growth. The very important thing is actually to convince people also um, you know, on the state level and on the federal level of the importance of cities um, where change actually takes place. You, know? you can create kind of the most beautiful visions and the most beautiful policies, but in the end they need to be implemented. Policies that impact the community should be informed by the people that they serve. And so um, getting that engagement and that buy-in and that input from the community to inform how cities develop policies and positions um, to serve those residents are key so that we're properly connecting the dots from what the needs of the community are to what the resources that are being provided by the city. Where we live, how we live is, is under threat and we have to do, we have to respond to that in a way that also doesn't replicate the mistakes of the past, where certain communities are left out of the solution and certain communities are neglected. So I really think you know, there's a, a larger existential threat and then there's the ever-present strategy component of how do we respond without making problems that exist worse? So. Uh, Everything's at stake. As cities become increasingly the leaders uh, for change and the centers for democracy, they're playing a sort of larger role than maybe they did in the future and are, are really becoming more global cities, that it's important to have those conversations not only with different actors in your own local community, but with actors abroad. What makes this program unique, the New Urban Progress Fellowship, to not only look uh, inside of cities, but also see them as players um, in the transatlantic uh, relations. They're the ideal places for change and progress because um, 
it's, I always say cities are laboratories, right? They're, they're experiments for how um, social and human interaction occur. I think it's a, it's a great place for urban innovation and progress um, because you're able to test policies um, on a large scale to see the impact on the quality of life for a, a lot of people. When thinking about issues um, related to urban planning and urban progress, it's very easy to just be talking to the same people and just be in a very American perspective. So I'm really excited to talk with um, people from other cities in the U.S., but also um, from people outside of the U.S. and really get that German perspective and see what kind of new ideas they're thinking about, what challenges they're thinking about, see where the comparisons are, see where the differences are. One theme that we were really thinking about in our working group is um, actors working at the different levels, um, whether it's bottom up and people who are kind of working outside the system like activists and people who have like their feet on the ground um, versus the more formal structures and more formal actors, whether that's businesses or um, politicians. I think the important thing about the New Urban Progress Fellowship, um, not only is this a really important conversation about cities as centers of economic development, but increasingly political development, but quite frankly, stitching together people from two sides of the Atlantic and building these relationships now that will flourish many years as the folks that are part of this fellowship continue to rise in their respective fields in the public sector, in the private sector, or in government. The New Urban Progress Project has been an amazing experience. Not only have I had the opportunity to meet and engage with people that are also working in cities, but they're not just individuals that are working for cities. They are donating to apps that are creating technology for cities. They are working in think tanks that are working for cities. So we all have these different perspectives that we're coming at together to address, you know, how do we make our world more sustainable? How do we make it more equitable? How do we make it more innovative? And how do we make it more inclusive? And that's something that I can bring back to my community. I was really excited to visit Leipzig, and I think one thing that surprised me most was how much I could draw a connection in a way to Austin, Texas, which is where I was working. I think it's a really interesting political dynamic in Leipzig that you have kind of this growing city that's sort of known for this local art movement um, that is seeing a lot of progressive change and a lot of young people moving there, but it's in a region that is more conservative and is also seeing a growth in the alt-right or the farther right uh, political parties. And that's definitely true in Austin, Texas. You have kind of this blue city um, that's in sort of a red sea of Texas. Um, and so it's interesting to see how they're thinking about change. In terms of visions for cities, uh, the city of Leipzig was actually a good example for how, you know, um, you can create a, a vision for a city. And the interesting thing in Leipzig is that um, you actually need to um, you know, leave space, you know, uh, and to also stick to your plan, kind of be persistent on your zoning plan, on your urban development plan, even in times of uh, decline, you know, even if you have kind of high vacancy rates. As we've seen, in not just in Chicago, but in a lot of uh, American cities, uh, there's a disparity between who benefits from growth. And, and oftentimes, those who have kind of gone through the trenches of cities while they were in decline are the first to be um, dislocated once the cities start to rebound and thrive. And so as cities continue to grow and thrive, um, as we move forward, we want to make sure that those people that stuck through in the trenches can reap the benefits of that growth. Cities should put the people at the forefront and really understand it's about the needs of the citizens and give them the chance to become part of the development of new ideas and also to implement those. Topics that are most important for me as it relates to this fellowship is the, the systems that undergird every city, how different stakeholders come together to figure out how to make a city work. Uh, we have that dynamic in New York City it's something that you constantly work at. It's something that you constantly strive to make it work. How do you get the rich to go along with the poor? How do you get the, you know, people who are, uh, you know, much more invested in the private sector to agree with things from the public sector? These are some of the battles, not battles, but some of the discussions that take place in, in my city. And I think that hearing how that happens in other cities, how they deal with the systems and the stakeholders and getting everyone involved and getting buy-in and you know, ultimately getting to outcomes that are beneficial to everyone that lives in the city and lives in the urban area. It, it's interesting, it would be interesting for me to hear. 
as a local government practitioner, it's easy to focus on, okay, what, how are we gonna solve our problems and what problems are uniquely ours? Um, but as we not only travel through American cities, but um, go through German cities, we see that we share a lot of the same issues, housing affordability, um, immigration, climate resiliency. And so um, as we talk about best practices, best practices should be universal. I think it's incredibly important for cities to be engaging with one another. I'll tell you, in, 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 in many of the most recent years, I've, I've grown real frustrated with the ability of, of nation states to be able to actually work together. Uh, we're seeing a little bit different approach, I think, now with respect to the Ukraine. Uh, but in so many instances, in, in climate change and in, in de issues dealing with immigration, so hard for nation states to work with one another. I think it's easier for cities to work with one another because they're, they're not caught up in a lot of the geopolitical politics that seem to capture nation states. And frankly, when you start talking city to city, you realize that, that the challenges being faced are so similar uh, in ways that, that perhaps nation states don't, don't, don't share. So I think it's critical that cities talk to one another, both to, to learn from one another, to share uh, with one another, to support one another. I think, frankly, that that is the, the way of the future with respect to the, to the world order. So that's what makes democracy work, that's what makes our cities work, and that's what makes the transatlantic relationship between those cities work. New Urban Progress redefined what transatlantic relations really is. We focus at the city level and on really sharing best practices between urban leaders and Germany and the United States. We really helped create a large network of leaders who are working across cities in the United States and in Germany so that we can not only talk about best practices, but create a network where these best practices could flow. And we really hope that our fellows will really go along this network and really in their everyday life, in their professional life, really start implementing these ideas. Because we know so much depends on it, whether it's making the city more democratic, sustainable, or innovative.